politique à l'ensemble du peuple frère du Niger. Que nous remercions tous pour cet accueil très chaleureux et très convivial. Pour euh, la deuxième question, globalement, l'audience qui nous a été accordée par euh, le président du Conseil national. Mali and Burkina Faso's ruling junta has sent delegations to Niamey on Monday to show unity with the leaders of the coup in Niger amid regional threats to intervene against them. The talks came after the passing of a deadline set by the regional bloc known as ECOWAS for the Nigerian military to return President Mohamed Bazoum to power. Both Mali and Burkina Faso had previously warned that any foreign intervention in Niger would be considered as a declaration of war against them. Regional tensions have mounted since the coup nearly two weeks ago when soldiers detained Bazoum and installed General Abdelrahman Tiyashiani, former head of the presidential guard, as head of state. The gesture of solidarity comes amidst mounting pressure from the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, which issued a deadline for the coup leaders to reinstate President Mohamed Bazoum. Failure to comply with this could result in potential military action from the regional bloc. The political crisis in Niger took a sharp turn on t- July 25th. 26th when the presidential guard detained President Bazoum, leading to the subsequent declaration in interim leadership by General Abdullahman Tishiani, who also assumed the presidency of the caretaker National Council for the safeguard of the homeland. Let's say that according to the Malian Minister of uh, Territorial Administration who spoke on behalf of the two delegations at the end of uh, a meeting with uh, the head of the Nigerian military, the visit was intended to reaffirm the strong solidarity of these two countries in Niger the refusal to carry out the sanctions taken against the people of Niger by ECOWAS, and finally to reiterate the active, effective and full participation of Mali and Burkina Faso in self-defense operations in the event of aggression by ECOWAS against Niger. I wonder what's the mood in the capital, Niamey, where you are, about the threat of uh, ECOWAS military intervention? Well, James, uh, so the mood about uh, this threat uh, of a military intervention is, uh, let's say, uh, rather positive among uh, many citizens. And as you know, yesterday, faced uh, with this threat, the Genta called for a mobilization, especially of young people to defend the homeland. And uh, many young people with uh, whom we exchanged said that they were ready, really ready, and uh, willing to take on the task because they believe that it is a war that uh, ECOWAS wants to wave uh, against Niger, and that uh, in such circumstances, Every citizen must consider himself as a soldier to defend the country. To this end, you have a civil society organization that uh, set up so-called patriotic watch committees, which are in fact uh, groups of young people at uh, roundabouts and other key places in the capital Niamey to monitor and denounce any suspicious movement uh, or people. Thank you so much again, Abdul. It's very nice to talk with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too, uh, James, and uh, take care. Viewers French to Africa reporter Abdul Razak was speaking with us from the Niger capital, Niamey. Tensions are mounting in Niger and its neighboring nations after a deadline passed on Sunday for coup leaders in Niamey to restore the democratically elected president to power or face possible military intervention by forces from the Regional Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS. In Nigeria, lawmakers from the body from the border region warned that any military action could be cat- catastrophic 
for Nigerians living and uh, during, uh, doing business in the area. When the West African Regional Bloc ECOWAS announced border closures with Niger on July 31st, Nigerian truck driver Bua Muhammad did not expect immediate repercussions. For more than 10 years, he had been shuttling goods and passengers from Nigeria's Jigawa state to Niger. Jigawa shares a border with the Zinder region in the Republic of Niger, but now Muhammad says his business has come to a halt and it's impacting his family. He spoke to Vioe via phone. He says, I'm just idle, doing nothing, and I have family, siblings, and four children. He says, we're not finding things easy. I'm begging the government to open the borders. Soldiers of Niger's presidential guard overthrew President Mohamed Bazoum on July 26th and have held him hostage in defiance of calls from Equas and Western allies for him to be released and restored to power. In addition to closing land borders, Equas has declared a no-flight zone over Niger and announced the seizure of public assets in member states. The regional bloc had issued a seven-day notice for the military leaders to restore democratic order and threatened to unleash regional security forces on Niger if they failed to respond. The deadline passed Sunday and anxiety is rising over the uncertainty of the situation. Like Bua Muhammad, Hassan Muhammad, a phone trader, worries that a military invasion would make matters worse. He says, I'm not happy with that because we trade, they come to do business here and we also do business in their market. But this has all stopped. He says, things are even worse for the past two weeks. Even eating has become a problem, he says. We're begging the government to resolve this issue. We pray for God to intervene. Over the weekend, Nigerian lawmakers from the border states warned against a military invasion of Niger, saying it will have serious consequences. Nigerian economist Emeka Okengu agrees. It does not necessarily need to be in you know, a true cohesion of a military you know, uh, aggression. Niger is a major trade route. All the Trasara uh, trade uh, routes. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, the, the animals slaughtered, you know, during our festivities actually come from that route. And also considering that uh, a lot of uh, foodstuffs too, you know, especially the cowpea, also comes from around that uh, area. It is also one of our fastest uh, routes, you know, to the sea. The, the impacts would and, and the economy will be very bad. In 2021, trade between Nigeria and Niger reached $180 million, according to the Observatory of Economic Complexity, an online data analysis group. As of Monday, the sanctions remained in place, and the next course of action by Equus remained unclear. On Sunday, Nigerian President and Equus Chair Bola Tinubu met with governors of Sokoto, Kebi, Yobe, Borno, and Jigawa as part of consultations on the matter. Timothy Obezu for VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. Voters in the Central African Republic have overwhelmingly approved a draft constitution that paved the way for Faustin Akanj Tuadera to seek a third term as president. The national election body said on Monday, Tuadera's rival says he wants to remain president for life under the increasingly visible protection of private Russian mercenary group Wagner, which first deployed to the Central African Republic in 2018. The new constitution would extend the presidential mandate from five to seven years and abolish the two-term limit. You are listening to Daybreak Africa on the Voice of America. I'm James Barty in Washington. Today is Tuesday, August 8. For more African news and features, visit our website at voaafrica.com. Connect with us on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. South Sudan's President Salva Kiir Mayade has met with Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to discuss bilateral cooperation and mediation efforts to end the ongoing bloodshed in neighboring Sudan. South Sudan's Minister of Presidential Affairs, 
Barnaba, Mariah, Benjamin told viewers Nabil via Joel that one day that the one day visit was initiated by Prime Minister Abe with the ongoing Sudan conflict and its regional consequences as the focus. The two leaders met over lunch and they discussed first how to promote peace in the region, particularly with the Sudan, that is one, and two also uh, with regards to cooperation between the two countries, Ethiopia and South Sudan in all areas that target their economy, their stability, and equally the infrastructure in the area. On the economic front, they discussed the issue of a Padak uh, road built from the Ethiopian border uh, towards the oil fields. This is to enhance and open up a new road that can connect South Sudan through Ethiopia to Port of Djibouti. The Ethiopian's uh, Prime Minister informed President Salva that design was going on and it will soon be started. On the issues related to peace in the Sudan, they say they should both cooperate seriously to support peace processes in the Sudan. That will help the IGAD initiative on Sudan to be more effective by having a strong cooperation in order uh, the IGAD quartet that is uh, responsible to mediate in the peace process in the Sudan becomes more yes. meaningful and more strength. Yes, uh, President Kiir is of course part of a four-person delegation named by IGAD to try to mediate and broker peace in Sudan, tell me about what he's doing uh, in that regard, because the bloodshed is well, still going on. The, in through, our bi- uh, through our strong bilateral relations between South Sudan and Sudan, of course, President Salva is encouraging the two adversaries, that is the SRF as well as the Sudan government, to take seriously in bringing peace to the people of Sudan by cooperating with the mediating processes of IGAD, led by President Ruto of the Republic of Kenya. Because, as you know, President Salva has more influence in terms and also knowledge with regard uh, with the Sudan and and the fact that he has got strong sort of personal uh, knowledge, friendship of the two, I'm sure he could uh, have a more effective persuasion process that can help that process to go ahead. Yes, many people agree on the influence and the close knowledge of President Salvaquir has uh, of the warring factions in Sudan. And as such, people have been expecting him to be more present, to do more, you know, to have more effect in stopping oh, the bloodshed. Yes, indeed, he's doing, he's doing a lot, he's doing more. Of course, he didn't attend the quartet in Ethiopia. It was not because he didn't want to attend. That coincided with our Independence Day, that is of the 9th of uh, July. So it was not possible for him to attend, but he sent a senior advisor. But that did not reduce his effort in trying to push Khartoum leaders who are now fighting to make sure that the destruction does not serve the interests of the people of Sudan, nor the interests of the people of the region as a whole, including the Republic of South Sudan. That's Barnabas Marab Benjamin, South Sudan's Minister of Presidential Affairs. He was speaking with viewers Nabil Biagio. From Juba, resident doctors in Nigeria are planning daily protests Wednesday at several government institutions, including the Ministry of Health. The group says the move is necessary to press home its demands for better working conditions and government's failure to negotiate salary increases and the payment of arrears. But some Nigerians are calling on the striking doctors to give the new government time to meet their demands. Viewers Peter Clotty, Rich, Dr. Innocent Oji, the president of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. So this strike has been on for over a week now, with government not doing anything to resolve the issues that we raised. And so we have gotten information that instead of the government trying to address the challenges, especially the very urgent ones, they are going ahead to issue directives to the chief medical director to begin to victimize our members who have joined the strike. And so our National Agency Council met today and decided to escalate by starting a nationwide mass protest from Wednesday, 9th of August, 2023. We are planning to picket the Federal Ministry of Health, the Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, and all the tertiary health institutions nationwide, both federal and state. Some people are saying whether this round of protest and the threat to embark on a daily protest, whether it's necessary. They said, why don't you have patience for the government 
to resolve your concerns. And that is the point. They are not telling us how long we are supposed to wait. Session to when? You, you recall that this has been the, their language and their message for years now. And so our members are asking, are we waiting to when? Mind you, even the promise they made some time ago, which they signed the agreement with us, that on or before 5th of June, they will release a secular or a policy that will enable the chief medical directors to recruit doctors and nurses to replace those who have left the system. The document is there, I can send it to you. It was clearly written, this secular will be released before 5th of June. We are now in August, two months after it hasn't been released. And so when people say we should have patience, patience till when? Do you think the decision made by the leadership of the resident doctors of Nigeria would have any significant impact to pressure the government enough to act? It depends on the government. We are just agitating and this agitation will continue. I'm sure they possibly thought that it, it is only a, an indefinite track action that we can do. No, we, we have all the options on the table because these issues have become systemic and we cannot continue to stay like this. Something that is already leading to death of our members cannot be allowed to continue. And make no mistake about it, our members are resolute and they are willing to stay on until the government does this thing, which essential is a simple thing to do. But we are simply worried. We don't know why they haven't done that up to now. So what happens if the government decides that those who are picketing will not be paid? Nigeria is not a banana republic. We are governed by law. So if they're going to do that, they will have to provide the law that will guide whatever they want to do. Dr. Innocent Oji is the president of the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. He was speaking with viewers Peter Clotty.